Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time we're going to be working with something that as a network engineer we've all probably worked with at one time or another and that's syslog. Now there are two packages that you can use on the Raspberry Pi. One is our syslog which is installed by default and in our case we're going to go through and set up the uh, alternate one which is syslog ng. And we'll go ahead and get that process started. And to save some time, I have already gone through and done the sudo apt-get update. And I am running on Raspbian, uh, the 2.9.2013 version. And we'll go ahead and say yes. And it's going to download quite a few packages. There... It's probably going to be a matter of personal preference as to which version of syslog that you use. I tried working with the R syslog, could not get it to accept the uh, syslog output from a uh, router that I'm using as a part of this video. Probably something I've done wrong. So after spending over a week trying to get it working, I decided to go into going to the syslog ng there is quite a bit of information out on both of them i've got the uh, user's manual downloaded for syslog ng and i even found some pretty decent information online so it's very straightforward to set up the what we are going to do this time is a generic setup so that all devices come in to the same log file I'm going to work on getting one separate because depending on the size network you may be doing this on, even temporarily, you may want to have different devices going to different syslog files. There are some things that you'll want to do just as a matter of course. Make sure that you've got your time zone set up and that the device that is going to be supplying the syslog is running to a synchronized time server so that, that way if you're trying to debug a situation between multiple devices that they've got the same time reference and you're not having to correlate well this one's in this time this one's in this time but they're actually running at the same time so running multiple time zones especially when you're trying to debug something is can be a little frustrating so we're in the process here of just about winding this one up to have it ready to roll There is one other step that I found that I had to do, and then once we get past this point and it's setting up one more file that it's that's got to have, you'll have to manually create the log file that it's going to record to, or write to, as, as the case may be. Minor situation, but I've got that all listed out, and when you read the post on my website, you will see that, and it should not be any problem. So we're coming down to the last couple of steps here, and then we'll be able to move on forward. To Also, to save some time, I already have a Cisco router sitting off the same switch that I'm on, and it's already sending syslog information. And on my website, I will give you all the configuration that I put on, on that router to get it to send the messages. I'm just not going to go over that kind of detail in the video. Now the version of syslog you see here 3.3.5-4 that is the absolute latest. When I did this without doing the sudo apt-get update uh, it came up on 3.3.5-3. Both versions worked didn't see uh, any problems. And okay, so it's got syslog ng up and running. It's got this one mod and one more piece that it's setting up. Okay, now it's got it. So we had to do a restart. The default configuration file that we'll be making a minor change to has got a lot of good examples in it. So if you're not used to working with syslog ng on Linux, 
it pretty much walks you through what you're going to have to do, but I'll, I'll have a system all in place here that we, uh, we can get it up and running without a whole lot of effort. So we're, we're already in now so we can go on to the next step is we'll do a sudo touch var log Cisco dot log. All right. And now we will go in and work with the configuration file syslog dash ng dot conf. Okay, obviously I didn't do it right, so let's try it one more time. I'm not reading my own notes here, so syslog dash ng slash syslog dash ng dot conf. Now, much better. Now, as you can see, this is a very structured file, a lot of good comments, but you can also do everything in one area. No matter of personal preference, if you're doing a lot of different uh, configurations for different devices, you might want to keep them organized either by the different options, like this one will do a source space s colon net space, and we'll do the left tilde space UDP, left print IP, left print 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, right print space port, left print 514, right print, right print, whoops, one too many parens there, semicolon space, that special right bracket, semicolon it has to enter has to end with that anything past that point we could actually put a comment uh, here that says uh, we'll bind to all interfaces all right and now we'll do destination and this is where we tell it for the particular uh, situation we wanted to do and we want to go to a specific file and this information that you're seeing here is I got right off the the internet so this is one that you, know, you can start with this one and then make the proper change you want to so we'll do file left parentheses quote forward slash var forward slash log forward slash Cisco dot log close quotes right paren semicolon space I'll call our right squiggle and then the last one is where we get everything together and we will do source space s underscore net so it's like this is tying in that first line that we put together semicolon destination space d underscore cisco right paren semicolon space right squiggle semicolon that's it we've got what we've need in place so we will do the process to save what we've done enter now we'll need to do a restart of syslog ng. So we'll do a sudo space service syslog dash ng restart. Now what we'll do, since we should have something already running into the log here very shortly, we'll do a tail dash f. And if you've not used this particular version of the tail command before, this will sit there and display the last few lines in the file and then as new lines are added it will continue to, to refresh it so it's almost like you know you're you're seeing what's being written to the file as it's being done which is essential is what's happened so we'll see something here in just oh hopefully no more than uh than a couple of minutes maybe
I pause this for just a couple minutes because it took a little bit longer. But what you see now is information coming from the Cisco router that I've just got sitting on the other side of the, the switch that my Raspberry Pi is plugged into. And if we let this run, then you will continue to see other entries as they come across. So really, from a very basic syslog server, when you're trying to test something or debug it and you don't necessarily want to have this running through your main syslog uh, server that you may already have, this shows you how to get it up and running. So this is yet another way you can use the Raspberry Pi to help you troubleshoot network situations. You will find more information such as the, the configuration that I added to the Cisco router for it to output to my Raspberry Pi all the syslog information that I wanted it to on my website at www.ronnutter.com and I thank you for your taking time to watch the video and for the comments that I've been receiving.